All right, the third step to this video um, is creating your product displays via your importer. And so product displays are really important for user experience, right? This is all going on your website so that people can shop. And what you don't want them to shop for is uh, to see a shirt that comes in different sizes and, and colors and have them search around your website for that shirt but in pink small and the display showed large orange right and how you do that is you bundle up and I use the word bundle um, you have multiple products in one display so um, so let's go in and, and talk about this on your data sheet right and so um, if it's an ASAP data sheet we've already done this for you if it's a uh, different manufacturers data sheet I'm gonna go ahead and delete that off the last video um, you can still do this uh, either you can do it one at a time or you can manipulate your data sheet and and do it from there so what I'm talking about um, when you're coming into a data sheet on Drupal at least and and other carts may have one product per display Drupal does not so you want to think about your website like you would a brick and mortar store right so there's your warehouse in the back and it's got all your inventory in the back but you have to take that out to the front to display what you want your consumers to see so it doesn't matter what's in the back if it's not displayed and there's a valid reason for doing this again uh, maybe you took a brand line and um, it had a lot of their shirts on it and you don't want to sell their shirts um, but you didn't want to take the time to get those shirts off your uh, data sheet before you put it on there but you don't want to display them or maybe they've got a part that um, is a $20 part and your profits a dollar fifty and you're like ah, I'm not gonna do that um, and that's fine you can certainly use the sort and filter to go through and and uh, and sort by uh, pricing so uh, again if you're using this and you don't want to import those in the beginning do the sort and filter um, always do a custom sort so like here the pricings on column G and I can go in and sort smallest to largest on pricing right and it will change it over and then I can well, it's a CSV so it blew it out but I can go in and all right sorry I had to resort my column sizes anyway I can go back in and uh, sort it out and get rid of any of the pricing that is too small for me to make a profit off of so you can do that as well but I would have done that before I loaded the entire product line on so um, so there you go so again on uh, ASAP data it's not a big deal because you already have the grouping with so these two we group together right it's a tow hook and um, one's rated at 8,000 pounds and one's the same tow hook as you can see but it's black right and so these two would be together and so um, let's go back over to the site and let me show you how you would do this so it's the same thing you're going to go to feed importer and I'm going to I know I'm going to add an importer and even though I had said for each brand you want to um, create a new importer because then you'll have those fields on that um, and each brand again if it's not ASAP may not have the same mapping term right one may say part number one may say SKU so if you tried to use one massive importer for your products what you would then have to do is create that massive importer with every field and every part type for every type of product you're going to put on and then instead of going from the data sheet to the mapper you're going to go what did I call it on the mapper and change that over to your data sheet and um, <clears> that just kind of begs for problems to be made so um, but on product displays we can make one importer because you're only using two fields so we can make this product display importer and we can use use this for all displays 
All right, and here we're only going to need two fields, right? Um, so let's let this create it. I am going to go to settings, and I'm going to say off because I don't want this to be updated every 30 minutes. I'm going to go into my fetcher again, and on this one I'm still loading from a local file. So I'm going to select that and save it. I'm going to go down because you don't have to touch the settings here because it already updated the settings. Um, I'm going to change my parser here and um, it defaults to XML. I'm going to change that to comma separated so it's a CSV and on my processor I am now doing node processing right because we used commerce processing for the products but now we're creating the content. Now it's already defaulted on your site to node processor, so you're okay, but doesn't hurt to get into the habit of constantly checking to make sure everything is good. So I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna go into my settings, and now the settings bundle where it said before only product, because I can mass import all kinds of stuff, right? But here I want to just mass import a product display, and I am inserting new nodes, right? Now, when it says don't insert new nodes, uh, so maybe you're updating your product displays, and so you don't want new nodes, you just want to update the ones that are there. But we're inserting new nodes, and um, we're not updating existing nodes, because this is the first thing I hit this. And I always go to full HTML, even though on this, your uh, titles, are not HTML at all. It just I get in the habit of doing it right, and I leave the rest of it. And I am, whoops, I'm going with my user. And here again is where you can um, check to see if that user was authorized to do this. You as admin are going to be authorized to do this, but. And this is only in the cases where, again, maybe you have some user roles where one is support and uh, they only are allowed to do certain things on the website and you do not want them to ever be allowed to do this. Um, and when that, that node expires. So it, your product displays are never going to expire, right? Why that would be, uh, why you would ever use that is if you were updating uh, relevant information or news feeds. And we're not talking about that on one of your Drupal Commerce sites anyway. So uh, yeah, it's never going to expire. So I'm going to save that. And then we're going to go back into that mapping, right? And so here is where um, you're going to toggle in between. So let's say that you weren't using um, an ASAP sheet and you were using just a random um, sheet. They're always going to have a SKU number and they're always going to have a title right? Uh, preferably, otherwise your parts don't have a title. So if that was the case and you were using uh, and you wanted one product display for every product, you could grab this, right? If you're going to be doing this off ASAP, then use the grouping, the first one that's grouping. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it over here. And so uh, again, these are fields that you could, right? You could overwrite all the meta descriptions. You could do meta tags. You could do a ton of stuff. But um, right now we're just going to go with uh, grouping. So I know that my grouping is the SKU number, right? I'm telling it, take the SKU number from here for my grouping. And I'm going to then go over to the grouping title and then we're going to go down here and we're going to find where it says title, right? So this is not overriding the part title. This is the display. And so the display can say whatever you want it to say. It doesn't have to match the part number. And what I mean by that is, um, so your part title might say mm, Jeep front bumper 87 to 93 black powder coated blah blah blah, right? 
well, your display, if you're especially grouping them, you don't want it to say black powder coated because maybe the parts that are in it are black and then bare and then one with tubes. So the the, the title, and I've, again, taken care of all of that off ASAP. I've made a very base, so it would be uh, front bumper, you know, Jeep, 87 to 93 and then maybe the brand name right so I've already taken care of that but if you're going to be doing this on your own and working with a data sheet that um, let me save this we'll go to the data sheet for a second so hang on here again I got a little gear and I got a little uh, bubble because I want this to be unique right I don't want to have 17 titles that say the same thing because how is somebody going to look at a page with five products that all say the same thing? It's going to be very confusing. So I'm going to update this, I'm going to save that, and um, we're going to talk about you grouping something that didn't come from ASAP. So you can take your um, your part numbers, right? I use Programmer's Notepad for this. So let's say that I had someone else's parts and I'd sorted them out and I'm going, okay, I want these five to be together. What I'm going to do is put them on Programmer's Notepad. I know they have to be comma separated. So I separate those suckers out. Copy them. And Programmer's Notepad, what this does is, uh, and I use it a lot, um, it strips out all HTML. Um, so, especially if you're taking something off of a CSV and you try to import it into a, a website, the columns go in there and it's, it's wonky and maybe if you took it off a Word document, you, um, you're going to pull that HTML from a Word document or you copied off another website and, and so you put it on your website and, and you're like, it doesn't show up because you copied hard code to maybe they had white. Uh, letters and you have on a black site and you have a, a black letters so I just I use this just to strip everything off but if I was um, hang on let's make a pretend so if I was to be doing this without the grouping on here I could then um, say make it myself right and say part group or whatever and in the first column so in the first column I copy that off of my uh, programmers notepad and I pasted it in here I pasted it in here instead of here because here would have dropped it down and I like clean it's not that it would have been a huge deal but even if you only see one that's not true you can go back and forth on this and it is pulling all of those so you're grouping those all up and then you could make the description of or the part title of whatever you want right and so you're going to be mapping these two fields a, a part and a title so um, let's go back over here you're grouping we got that, we got this, and that's all I need is a grouping part and a grouping title on this particular one, right? Now I'm going to hit the tamper because although I need nothing under the um, title, because it's going to be one title, I do need multiple SKUs, right? So because I'm using multiples, I go in and I explode. Right, and the, and the string separator is set to comma. That's fine, and I add that, and that's it. Because again, there's going to be multiple SKUs, one title. So then I go back over to edit, hit that import page, that import, and now I go product display importer. I choose my file, the one I was just working off of, and then I hit import, and your products show up easy breezy right now if you don't understand or you have a question or you want to do something kind of unique just call me right um, you've got my number you know I'm available seven days a week so I'd rather have you spend 10 more minutes on the phone with me 
than me spend an hour trying to figure out what you did wrong and trying to clean it up. Uh, I don't mean to be snarky, but right, let's uh, let's make sure we got this down the first time going in. This is a very powerful, powerful tool that you have, um, but you have to use it correctly. Again, it's like a a kitchen knife. You can cut the turkey or you can cut your arm off. So don't rush into this. Make sure always shut your door. Don't take any phone calls. Don't do anything. Just stay focused on what you're doing. And you can load entire lines in under an hour and you'll get better at it. You'll get quicker at it. And um, as the data gets cleaner, it, you can trust the data. When you try and load something and it's the seventh time you tried to load it, load it because there was bad characters in there, you're going to understand and appreciate what clean data really can get to you. Now again, these videos were only made for, um, well they were made on a Drupal site, um, and but they're made for out-of-the-box carts. And some of those carts have a few different things, right? You want to add multiple images, there's a different step. If you don't know how to use your shopping cart, I will certainly try and help you, but all I'm going to do is Google instructions for it myself. And usually each shopping cart has taken a lot of time to give you instructions. There's usually forums that talk about people who are having problems. So use the internet, right? Um, and, and pay attention to what things are saying, right? Anyway, I hope this one helps. And... Um, Congratulations, you've just been able to import an entire line in an hour as opposed to two months of trying to input it by hand. So we'll have other videos on how to import one at a time, how to change over uh, displays that are already on and bundle them up. Uh, but these were all about working with your data sheets. All right, have a great one.